now growth as a single factor now single factor growth growth is very biased when only one factor is growing with the other factors unchanged so while the entire um, production possibility frontier shifts out the growth is strongly biased in favor of one of the products which um, the factors more intensively growing now the implications of the one factor growth or maybe we'll come to the mesmerizing growth is summarize the Rivsinski theorem now the Rivsinski theorem in a two good two factor world and assuming that the product prices are constant growing in the country's endowment of one product factor of production with the other factor unchanged has two results so the first one is an increase in the output of the good that uses the growing factor intensively and a decrease in the output of the other good common sense one increases one stays the, the same or it changes very little now um in the theorem it is further assumed that the country produces positive amounts of both goods before and after growing using before and after growth using both factors to produce each good that factors are mobile between sectors and fully employed and that technology is unchanged that really doesn't happen in the real world but the theorem states it like that now this uh, is a very good example of the um, Rivsinski theorem now assume that cloth is um, labor intensive and wheat is land intensive and increasing the labor alone will bias growth in favor of cloth Assuming that the relative price remains unchanged, more cloth will be produced we see and less wheat will be produced as seen by the shifting in production from point S1 to point S5. If we were to have the utility maximizing curve, we will see that S5 will be better off than S1, but they're both actually parallel, so terms of trade will remain the same or the prices were made the same now the effects on a country's terms of trade changes in a country's willingness to trade can alter a country's terms of trade if it is a large country and it's large enough to have an international impact of the equilibrium prices um now we must determine which is the um, um, small country case and the large country case a small country by definition is a country whose one whose level of trade does not impact the international equilibrium price ratio now they're usually price takers and the graphs on um, represented in this are all small countries as I mentioned because of the terms of trade um, were not changed when they expanded their production possibility curves Alright. Um small countries gain from trade regardless of what happens to their willingness of trade. They always end up with a better result than when they were a closed economy. A large country, by definition, is the complete opposite of small country is a is a country who's large enough to impact the terms of trade in the international level. They're price takers, they're price makers, I'm sorry, in the world markets. So they 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 dictate the price. Um, now the ones we're about to see are all large country scenarios and the first graph shows bias growth and the second shows um, is, uh, is mesmerizing growth so we will see now this one now the large country bias growth here you can see is clearly biased towards the cloth sector now in this graph growth is in the large country expands production of wheat it's exportable good and cloth is um, completing import goods so always remember I forgot to say it but whatever's on the horizontal line you're gonna import whatever's in the vertical line you're gonna um, export simple rule so they're exporting 40 units of wheat and 40 units of cloth you can see here 20 and 60 40 and 80 now 
production possibility share curve shifts to point um s six their their price line or trade line now revolves here so now 91 minus 54 is 35 so now their willingness to export actually decreased from 40 to 35 and their willingness to import increases from 40 to 55.3 so um the this decrease in the supply raises the price of wheat in the world market and improves the country terms of trade from one wheat and one cloth to 0.66 wheat per one cloth um how can you find this trade you just um put exports over imports so it'll be 35 over 55.3 which will equal 0 0.6 alright I'm, um, I'm sorry it's actually 37 91 minus 54 is 37 so to find the terms of trade it will be 91 minus 54 will be 37 and 26.7 minus 82 which 55.4 you divide 37 divided into 55.4 and it will equal 0.66 or two thirds of we um unit of wheat trades for one unit of cloth. So to get one unit of cloth, you have to give up only two thirds of wheat. Where before you only ha you had to give give up a whole bundle of wheat for one unit of cloth. So you're actually better off. At C6, the new consumption point, the large country exchanges on um, 37. I'm sorry about this. Units of wheat for 55.4 units of cloth. This country is better off at um at C6 than C1 since its um indifference curve is farther away from the origin. Simple Michael. Um, now I'll show you how to calculate the large country with uh, mesmerizing growth.